بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. It's nice to meet you uh, in a discussion session about occupational health. Let me uh, first uh, say that this video is just an introduction for the discussion. So it will show you some concepts and some tracks that we are going to cover throughout our discussion. So what are the intended learning outcomes by the end of this session? I do mean by that the discussion session. The intended learning outcomes that you would be able, uh, after finishing it, to acquire basic knowledge about occupational health and safety. As well, you are going to gain a basic knowledge about occupational hazards and disease, and you are able to understand what are the measures of prevention and the control, and as well, how to promote uh, the occupational environment and how to prevent against occupational hazards and diseases. So, it should be before go through this discussion to be ready by few things. First of all, you have to know very well what is the definition of occupational health. Then you do need to know what are the categories of occupational hazards and their types. And later on, you do need to know what are the different types of occupational diseases based on occupational hazards that you would to identify. Later, and the last one, you have to identify and know what are the measures of occupational health uh, safety. And these measures, you should identify them in details before go through this discussion. Let us start by occupational health physician, which is a term that it might be not that well known for some of you. If we would like to go through occupational health physician and discuss that, we should define firstly what is the occupational health. Later on, we should identify what are the components of occupational health team. If we are going to categorize the sectors that should be involved in the occupational health team, occupational health physician is one of the, these categories and one of the important sectors that should be involved in. In addition to a occupational health physician, what are the other members should be involved in a occupational health team? And what are the duties that a occupational health team should perform? For example, if we do have an occupational health team in our university here, what are the duties that this team should perform in relation to employer, in relation to the students, in relation to the uh, environment in relation to the buildings, in relation to the environment, in relation to the risks of the uh, occupations that go on. So we should, we should know what are the duties that are these uh, sectors or the members of this team are performing in relation to all those who are involved or those who are in this building or in this campus. Later on, you do need to specify a little bit in details what are the duties of occupational health physician. And when we say occupational health physician, we should know that we do have another part who is occupational health practitioner. And this occupational health practitioner is completely different from occupational health physician. And to identify all of these and to have a proper definitions apart from going to search in the literature and extract the information from that, imagine that you are visiting a place or you are involved in a place such as this campus in the university. What are the checklist for the evaluation that you are going to do as an occupational health physician regarding the environment of the university campus 
and what are the components of the checklist that you are going to involve in relation to the occupations or the different occupations in the university campus. If you are going to prepare a checklist, then you are going to identify the later tasks that the occupational health team will perform and the things that you are going to manage and plan an occupational health safety and the strategies as a measures to prevent hazards and diseases as well. This is, will lead us to the documentation in our discussion. And the documentation is a legal part in the medicine. And any practice in the medicine without documentation is considered as illegal and it is incorrect way, to be honest. So if we are going to talk about occupational health documentation, the first question that you would like to answer is it before establishment of the thing or after or during or during and after and before? What I am, would like from you to understand very well that the planning of the program for occupational health is starting before the establishment of the things. For example, if we are planning to uh, building a school, for example, or building, for example, a club, sports club. So occupationally, we should be involved in the committee that planning to design the map and the planning as well. If the map has been designed to put our ideas related to the environments and as well in the supply of the materials for the employers that will provide them a safe work and a safe job without any hazards. So the documentation, I'm not going to discuss that much now. I will leave that for the discussion, but put in your mind and peer in your mind that the documentation is before the establishment, during, and it should be continuous after. Is there certain essential aspects to be covered in uh, any documents related to the occupational health? It depends actually on the tasks that you are evaluate or the occupations that you are evaluate. For example, as I said before in the previous scenario, if we are visiting a school, for example, or we are working in a school, so we do need to cover all the aspects related to the environment and the, all the aspects related to the occupation. And we do mean by the occupation for all workers in this school. We are not talking about the teacher's bus only, but we are talking about all the workers, even the porters, even the cleaners. So we do need to report about all of them. So what are the risk assessment and the expected hazards? I'm going to take that in the coming slide. And what are the benefits of the starting and thereby application? I do mean by that from your discussion, is it necessary to make a mind map and make a plan for expected hazards and how to prevent these hazards and what are the precautions and what are the requirements? Is it beneficial or it's not beneficial? And if it is beneficial in terms of the theory, is it beneficial as well if we are going to apply it? Does it reduce the risk of morbidity? Does it reduce the risk of mortality? Does it reduce the risk of the hazards in general? So discuss that and have a conclusion about. Risk assessment and expected hazard. For example, this is an application for work document. So do assume that you do have in your scenario, an officer is allocated, uh, for example, as a teaching staff member. So he's applying for the work and we are going to do a risk assessment for this teacher he, who is going to be a teaching staff member at the university. So what is the components of this application form in terms of the risk assessment? Which, or sorry, what is the components of the risk assessment form, not the components of the application form? What's the component of the risk assessment for a teacher? Another scenario, we do have some cleaners are coming to apply for the work at our campus. So what are the components of the risk assessment that we are going to apply 
and work on. So in risk assessment, we do need to identify the risk, the level of the risk, what are the interventions that we are going to use against this risk is to minimize them or to eliminate them. I'm not going to discuss that much pre-employment examination and the periodic examination. I will leave that for your discussion. And what is the difference between pre-employment examination and periodic examination and what are the benefits? And we do have here a figure that talks about types of occupational hazards. Have a discuss about what are the types of occupational hazards and what are the different types of occupational hazards. If you can see here where the mouse is pointing, this is, for example, is a biological hazards. It's talking about biological hazards. So what are different types of biological hazards? And thereby, what are the different types of biological Oh, sorry, occupational disease. What are the differences or what different types of occupational health diseases? And have a read about list of occupational diseases that was revised 2010 and these recommendations about the ILO, which is available on this website. These are the list of occupational health disease, which is the last version that was revised at 2010. And it was the list of occupational disease and uh, recording and notification of occupational accidents and disease. It's, it is an international document. This is an example. I'm not going to have all types of the hazards, but this is an example of hazards about ergonomics. And you should know what are the 10 basic principles of ergonomics to have a safe work and a safe workplace as well. Safe work for the worker and the safe workplace, which will prevent the injuries and reduce the morb morbidity for the worker. What is the topic in relation to the occupational health? As you can see here, we are talking about routes of transmission. We are talking about platform transmission, airborne transmission. So what is the topic which we are working in relation to the occupational health? Are we talking about something which needs a consideration in terms of the occupational health? What are the precautions that should be made? What are the measures of prevention and protection that should be available? Here, it looks like that these people is hearing for someone talking and he's talking to them. So as you can see here in, 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 this, in this slide, what is the task? I think it is health education. So what is the importance of health education in the occupational health? Is it important? Is the health educator part of a occupational health team? Is there certain topics that should be raised while we are doing a health education in certain jobs? Is there general things that should be raised in any jobs? So discuss about the role of the health education in the occupational health. Is it important or not important? Here, I think it's clear from the figure and from the three figures here that we are talking about PPE, which protective or personal protective equipment. And this personal protective equipment is a necessary, essential part to provide a safe and uh, feasible work without any risks uh, for the worker. So discuss about the personal protective equipment in relation to the shops. What are the principles of a prevention and, uh, and control of occupational health and safety problem? This is one of the questions that you can open the discussion about. And I'm finishing my talk about OSHA what is OSHA? You need to define that and you do need to go throughout the documents 
that uh, are related to the OSHA. Thanks very much for your attention. And I would like to thank my dear friend, Mr. Mohammed al Ghanai, who has produced this video for you and hope to meet you next time. Good luck.